Hello, and welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about anonymous functions in MATLAB and how they can make your life easier. We'll talk about functions in general and then tie that back into this idea of anonymous functions, which is kind of particular to MATLAB, but it's really nice in the way it lets you talk about mathematical functions in the MATLAB context. So another large part of coding, no matter what language you're coding in, is the idea of functions and writing your own functions to do certain tasks over and over again, and MATLAB is no exception to that. So for MATLAB, you can write your own functions right in a live script, right? It's just the keyword function. You put the output here, equals, give it a name, and the input variables. You put your code in here, and you put end at the end. Everything goes in here. That's great. If you want to include a function like this in a script file, it must go at the very end after all the other code in that file. You can also include them in a separate file, which we'll do here to illustrate some concepts here. So I'll make a new plain script file. We're going to call it function y equals test function of x. And we're just going to set y equals to x squared plus 1. Now notice for these functions, there is no return statement that you might see in like a Java. As long as you set the name of the output variable to the appropriate name, it's going to return that variable with this input x, do the computation return the y because that's what it's told to set it to up here. If a function is a separate file, you must also save it in the Active Directory with the name on the save file being the same as the function name. So if I go to hit save here, it's going to recommend saving it as test function, which is good because it needs to be that. So now it's popped up here in our sidebar here. You can do multiple inputs, multiple outputs, all that stuff works out great. For instance, if you look at the Runga-Kutta method function that is here, you don't have to know what it does, but the point is I have two outputs here, t and y, for my function with a set of inputs. So if I have multiple outputs, I can put them in brackets here, and that'll get me what I want. For multiple inputs, you put multiple things in parentheses separated by commas, and that gives you multiple inputs to use in the code as well. A quick note on using these functions, right, if I were to call this function and then run it, I only see one vector output. It's a vector output, but that's just the T from the code up here. If you just type the method itself, you will only get the first output. If you want both outputs, you have to type a bracket with two variables in it on the left hand side, and then it will store both sets of outputs in your interface. So we can see that we can definitely do multiple inputs, multiple outputs, all that stuff works out great for these functions. And this one here is fairly simple. This one though, is more of a mathematical function rather than anything else, right? It is just a one input, one output mathematical function. So there might be a better way to implement this. And it turns out there is, and that's with anonymous functions. So for anonymous functions, instead of writing that whole test function thing that we did before, I can just write FCM, which I'll call my function, is something like this. What this says is this FCN is now a handle to a function of one input x, and for any input, it returns x squared plus one. So if I run this section, which will give me that function handle over here in the workspace window, you can see it right here. I can now say fcn of four, and it'll split out 17. I can say fcn of minus one, and it spits out two. It does what it's supposed to do for numerical inputs. Test function is the same thing. If I do test function for this thing we wrote in the separate window of four, 17. For minus one, it spits out two. They do the exact same thing, but one requires a separate MATLAB file written and saved separately, where the other one can be done in one line here within a statement. So that's what I mean by making things easier. It's one line of code to write this function as opposed to a whole separate MATLAB file to do so. Now for multiple inputs, this works out great. Function two could be a function of both x and y, that is say x squared plus y squared. Great, let's check that out, run the section. Function two of three and four should give me 25, which it does. That's great. Multiple output is much trickier. If you have to deal with multiple outputs, you're probably better off writing a separate function file like that test function from before to handle that case. But for multiple inputs to one output, this is great. These do great things for mathematical functions that have a singular output to them. 
Now, there's one issue with the functions that I've written them so far, and that's the following. If I try to take a vector of values, so let's reset our x here to be the vector 1, 2, 3. MATLAB likes doing vectors. What happens if I apply my function to x? We have a problem here. And that's because it's trying to take the vector input and square it. A vector can't be squared because it's you can't multiply vectors by themselves. So what we have to do there is make sure our functions only refer to element-wise operation. That is what the error here is suggesting. Incorrect dimensions for matrix to a power. Perform element-wise matrix powers use dot caret. This is what we want to do if we swap our function to be dot caret and dot and dot here as well. Now this works exactly like we want it to. And a lot of built-in MATLAB methods will automatically apply things to vectors. They will automatically try to shove vectors into functions to make it work more efficiently because that's how MATLAB works. So when you are writing your functions, you always want to make sure that you use dot exponentiation when trying to do powers and also use dot times whenever you're trying to do multivariable stuff. Like if I had an x, y term in here plus x times y, that would cause it to break if I didn't put x dot times y. So you always want to make sure you use dot exponential and dot times for these functions because you want it to work on vectors because MATLAB will, in its built-in stuff, try to make things vectorized because that is more efficient for MATLAB the way it's coded. The last thing to mention here for functions and not in general is plotting graphs. So when you're plotting graphs, you can use fplot with a symbolic package. That's one way to plot things. But an easier way with these anonymous functions is to just give MATLAB a bunch of values and have it plot those values. Really, you're telling MATLAB, plot a bunch of these dots and connect them. And if I make the dots close enough, it's going to work out fine. So let's grab our x values from before. Or recall the x values here we had before was from minus 3 to 3 by steps of 0.01. So we just have that array there which you can generate by say x vals equals minus three colon 0.01 colon three. That'll generate a list from minus three to three with seeing size of 0.01. You could also use x vals is the lint space command. This will generate a linearly spaced set of numbers between two endpoints and a certain number of them. So I can say go from minus three to three and generate 500 of them. It's not going to be the same array as before, but it will be small enough space that it should be able to handle things. And to plot these functions, we can just type the plot command, and we're going to plot in not this here. We're going to plot in the x, y version. So I want to plot the x coordinates first, which is x vals, and the y coordinate second, which is function of x vals. And again, because I have written this to accept vectors, this will work fine and will draw my graph. You see right here on the side, I have the graph. It goes from minus 3 to 3 in x. It starts at 1. The x's are weird here. Keep that in mind. Up to 10 as it should. And that's a set. What if I want to also add a second function here? Let's add a second function that we'll call g. And we'll call this 2 sine of x plus 4. That'll put it up in the range of this picture. And let's plot it in the same way. And then we can try to plot this. And we've got two separate figures here. And that's because we're working with a live script and it's trying to plot two things. Now, so for normal MATLAB with scripts and with pop-up figures, if you try to plot something over a plot that's already there, it will overwrite the original plot. So in this case, it drew the first graph, gave it to us, said, great, there's your graph. We said plot again. It said, okay, I will clear out that plot and draw a new one. What if I want these on the same axes? I can do it with the hold commands. So I go before the first plot, I type hold on. I go after the last plot and I type hold off. Now I can run this code and I get one image with both graphs on it. This image up here is from the first graph we did way earlier in an earlier video. It is not related to this code here. We would just see now one image with both curves on it. So hold on, hold off lets you do that, it lets you put images on the same graph and get to less figures and total output, as well as showing how things interact with each other. Because we're in a live script, you could see the graphs originally anyway, instead of them being overwritten. But if you want them to be on the same axes, you will need to use hold on and hold off to do so. So that's how you can set up anonymous functions to make things look a little bit easier, a little bit simpler than they were before. Instead of having a separate file for a math function like this, you can just do it in one line right here. 
and then that will give you the exact same flexibility and properties that you want to be able to work with it going forward. Note that particularly for this function here, right? If I have multiple inputs, the order of the inputs matters. It doesn't for this function because it's symmetric, but x, y versus y, x is gonna give me a different function depending on how the function is written out. So the order matters. You have to be careful how things are set up, but these will give you ways to set up and write functions that are easier to write and see in the same MATLAB file, but still allowed to plot and do anything you want with using these anonymous functions.